Hey everybody, George Fennell, Steel Shield Technologies Weapon Shield. Here again today for another video in our series. And what I want to talk about today is the Weapon Shield and how we do this test called the Timken or the Felix Lubricant Tester Test. Um, this is the Felix Lubricant Tester. It's been around, as I said, if you've seen our other video, which was Weapon Shield Wear Test. This has been around for about 70 years. And it's been a standard in the industry. It is not a quantitative machine, it's qualitative. Uh, the difference being a quantitative machine is more of an absolute value machine that's used in science for very, very strict and definite measurements um, on, on a quantitative basis. Look it up, you'll, you'll understand. Qualitative is more of a observational, kind of like not absolute result test. The, uh, the results can vary a little bit, which they can, but not on a great scale. This test is used widely by lubricant salesmen, by uh, in-house people such as us also, in order to compare lubricants and see which lubricants test. You set a standard, either they're going to test better than that standard or they're going to test worse than that standard. And if you saw our first video, I'll mention that again, the weapon shield wear test. We used break free to set a standard, which wasn't bad at around seven pounds. We ran Weapon Shield, and of course, Weapon Shield ran to the bottom of the scale 25 pounds, which on a point-to-point -point basis uh, is about 1,800 pounds uh, of actual force on that bearing with the fulcrum settings that are on the machine. We then actually showed you, too, the difference between, as we randomly picked one of many, as you can see, Hoppy's Elite, and we ran that, which came out about 3 pounds, which was, didn't fare as well as the Break Free. Anyhow, every time that we do a test, we have to clean this machine meticulously. We have to resurface the raceway, and I'll quick show you the raceway. It's a Timken raceway. Put it here so Matt can zoom in on it. The Timken raceway is attached to this shaft, and this shaft then goes back to a pulley system, which this pulley is attached to this motor. It's an electric motor. It's a quarter horse Dayton motor and it turns at about 1745 RPM. So the pulley is about a half speed reduction, two to one, or one to two. So it takes it down to about 800 RPMs on this, which sends up what we call a boundary condition. If it goes too fast, it gets into another, uh, what we call a regime of lubrication, hydrodynamic, and then there's a lasser hydrodynamic, and there's a whole science behind this stuff, believe it or not. But this raceway, I can show you is attached with this retainer and here's the raceway itself it's attached to the shaft and this is what we run this bearing which is in this I'll move that so you can see it here this bearing that we have attached in the retainer it's just like a bearing and a race system like in your wear bearings where you have tapered roller bearings inside an inner and an outer raceway and those raceways, then you put your grease or your lubrication in there, and of course that's, whenever anything fails, the bearings are, de they, they are designed to fail because they're made of softer metal on a softer, softer Rockwell hardness. Um, it can be of diff varying hardnesses, but usually it's like a Rockwell, the bearing race might be C C52 to 56, and these might be C46 to 50, so uh, on that Rockwell scale. But anyhow, we also use these. These are the the bearings. They are Felix, from the Felix Corporation, same people who make the Felix uh, test equipment in Aurora, Ohio, and they are certified test roll bearings, as it shows right here. And they're sealed and everything. So when you get them, they come in a packet, and each one of these is pre-coated. I don't know. Can you see that, Matt? Each one of these is pre-coated with a protective wax-like coating. So what we do is we remove that and we take brake cleaner, uh, acetone, whatever we have on hand that is a good stripper and cleaner. Make sure we strip everything real good and clean and then wipe it dry. So this has already been set up. We already stripped this, wiped it, put it in the mount and um, in the arm and mounted it up ready to go. So what we're going to do, we're going to show you from kind of beginning to end what Weapon Shield is going to do on this. And then we're going to do something amazing that 
you may not believe, but try it yourself and you'll see. So the first thing we're going to do is take our weapon shield. We're going to put a drop on the race. And we're going to bring, just let that set for a second, work in and start to apply pressure on the, on the scale. Now if you remember, or maybe you didn't, you didn't see it, brake free throws about there. It just seized up. Weapon shield continued as we slowly apply pressure. What we're doing is building the boundary film. Take it down to 25 right there. That's actually about 30 pounds there. I'm going to turn this off, and I'm going to set this up here so Matt can get close up. So you can see there's no damage to that bearing. There's a little polish mark there. That little polish mark basically is what we call metallic elasticity. It's deformation of the surface from all the pressure that we put on it. And with this fulcrum system that you see and that we're showing here, if you do the force formula, F equals mass times the acceleration, and do the measurements and add this up with the fulcrum that we're uh, utilizing here, it's about for every pound that we're putting on this scale, we're getting about 35 pounds uh, of actual point-to-point -point pressure on the bearing and on the race. So that when we're down at the bottom, that's roughly, we're better than 1,800 pounds of pressure on that and no seizure whatsoever. Now. Here's the amazing thing. I tell people, you can't do this with anything else. We're going to take and wipe this dry. Wipe the weapon shield off and the same here. I'm just going to take and wipe the weapon shield so that you can see there's the weapon shield sitting on the rag in here. This is called vapor phase lubrication when you bring it under pressure. In other words, your gun may have smoked and basically got rid of all the lubrication on it, but it'll still run and it won't seize up. Remember there was our breaking point. No one else can do that. In fact, if you look at the bearing and the race from being wiped dry, there's a little mark there, but not much. Nothing like the, the torn up conditions that we had before. So that was, that's what makes Weapon Shield special, like I said. Um, nothing is forever. Weapon Shield will burn out. I only went to about 10 to 15 pounds because if I were to take it the whole way down to 25, then of course it certainly would. The lifetime of the advanced boundary film is always going to be uh, kind of like uh, stipulated by the amount of pressure under a certain amount of time. So if you're putting it under enormous pressure like that and the heat is going through the ceiling, so to speak, uh, it's not long before you'll destroy that boundary film. But like I said, everybody keeps their weapons, you know, with a drop and keep your weapon lubricated. But even if your weapon runs short and it smokes off, let me show you. I'll just real quick here. I'll put another, put another drop on there. And I'm going to run this down and smoke it for you so you can see what I'm talking about. Now it's retreating the surface so that we're getting a really, really good treatment again. And even though that's a had a little mark on it, it's still a wider surface area than we started out with, so it's a little rougher to do. But we're holding it down. Now, if you can, you see the bearing and you see the raceway, you can see the smoke that's coming off of that. Even like on a course of fire, when your weapon gets that hot, that heat from the barrel gets transferred to your receiver. Your receiver actually is going to start to change dynamically in the slide, especially on a pistol and a rifle, like your slide to frame fit 
or your bolt um, carrier to it, the, I'm sorry, the rail fit, I guess. But it will be definitely affected. But as long as your weapon shield is on there, even though it's smoking like that, and you're, it looks like it's lo losing lubrication, you're not losing any lubricity whatsoever. And if I take this and wipe it down, once again, take the lubrication off of it here, I can take it down to at least 10 pounds and hold it there. So that's how Weapon Shield works, and that's called advanced boundary film. And then when you move the uh, remove the lubrication, it's called vapor phase. So I hope uh, I think I think uh, that I hope that I conveyed some of my knowledge to you, and that you understand more on how Weapon Shield works and why it works and the capacity it does. So thanks very much, everybody. And we'll be doing another one very shortly in comparison. We've had a few requests out there um, from people to at, who have asked to say, how does it compare with this? How does it compare with that? And we'll show you. So tomorrow, uh, we'll definitely we'll do another one. And what people want to see, well, the first one we're going to do uh, is gun butter. We have a lot of people that said, well, we've heard gun butter will do the same thing. We'll show you. And we'll see if it will do. So until then... Please visit us at WeaponShield.com. Thanks very much. I'm George Fennell, and see you next time.